The Canola School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Hey, Kara Gustaros here with realagriculture.com. I am back here today with another canola school episode and I have here with me Jada Hoppy, who is a field crop agronomist in Bigger Saskatchewan. How's it going today? Awesome, thank you. So we are at the time of the year where we are staging for in-crop herbicides. What are some of the things you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when it comes to looking at your canola crop? Uh, well, first of all, I definitely know that this year with things being a little bit late and it being a little bit dry at the start that a lot of fields wouldn't have got it at a pre-burn or maybe wouldn't have got the best pre-burn. So getting out there early and seeing what weeds are coming up initially is really important and just keeping in mind that you do probably have two apps if you need. So another recommendation you're kind of looking at is producers are wondering when it comes to tank mixing different groups, what sort of recommendations do you have there? So obviously at first you've got to know what kind of canola you have. So whether you're looking at a group two, group nine or group 10 resistant canola. And then my first big consideration would be how many grassy weeds you have. So often I get the argument that uh, say group 10, you're going to have that contact action. You're going to burn the uh, wild oats or the volunteer wheat or whatever before you actually get the activity from the systemic group one. And uh, depending on the population of weeds, I think that's kind of the bigger issue there. So if you have a lot of grassy weeds and you're solely relying on a contact chemical to actually get the control, I, I don't like that. I'm not really comfortable with that. If you have a very low grassy population, you'd probably get away with just the contact chemical, but I like to see somebody use a group one and just make sure. And also just make sure to use as many actives as possible is best for you doing your due diligence with resistance. So typically you're gonna have anywhere from cotyledon to bolting as your time frame, but depending on whether you wanna do one app or two is gonna have a lot of uh, control over when you wanna go. Because you're going to want to get, ideally, as close to the time before you're going to have your row closure, but also you're going to want to get ahead of the weeds. So if the weeds are ahead of the crop, that's going to probably mean you're going to want an early app, if not two. But if you can get away, like in this field we're in right now, is very clean. If you can wait and go as late as possible and get it right before row closure, that would be ideal. So obviously, ideally, you're going to want to get control of the weeds that are going to have the greatest competition with your plant. And that's going to be the weeds that come up at the same time as your plant. So you're going to want to make sure that you actually get control of those earlier weeds to come up and make sure that you get them. So typically, the earlier app is going to be better, the better app, because you actually want to get after those weeds. And once your row closes up, canola is an extremely competitive crop. And often a second app could honestly be a lot of cosmetic spraying if you don't want to be seeing those weeds growing up at harvest time but as far as actually your yield limiting weeds you're going to want to get control of the early season ones. So when it comes to herbicide layering another thing you're looking at is you know control on cleavers or south thistle those broad leaves what what sort of recommendations do you have there? So in the bigger area, we are pretty famously bad for having really, really bad cleavers. And they're an absolute no-no in your canola because they have very similar seed sides to your canola seeds. So you don't want them headed to the elevator. So a new product that came out, I think it was last year, was a quinoclorac uh, in your canola in crop. And it's great on cleavers. And then it also has south thistle on label and it absolutely smokes them as well. And then also barnyard grass, kind of a funny different label, but around here it's really, really vital for really bad cleavers control because with uh, say your group 10 you're only getting up to about two to three whirls and when you add the quinoclorac in you're definitely getting control of larger cleavers. Obviously ideally the best control you're going to get is the smallest weed as possible but also with that being said when you're waiting for rain you're waiting for weeds to come onto the ground so it makes the staging weeds very awkward and you got to be really timely because you're going to want to wait and make sure you have enough germinated but you don't want weeds that are already there to get too big because those are going to be the most competitive with your crop. So how do you stage your weeds when it comes to very stagey canola you know like you said there's some areas that have had a lot of drought and we've had kind of patchy rains so we're gonna have and then you had maybe some early flea beetle attacking all sorts of things that maybe caused your canola crop to now at this point be stagey how do you how do you tackle that 
So that's a really good question. So I have canola that I look at that's anywhere from just starting to bolt the two leaf on the hilltops. It's very, very stagey. So obviously we control in those crops is gonna be a little harder. The nice thing with those is they were the earlier seeded ones. So I've actually chosen to do two apps on those fields just to kind of get the weeds that have uh, kind of affected the earlier seeded, or sorry, the earlier coming up stuff, as well as the stuff that came up a little bit later. But then in an even seeded field that we uh, seeded a little bit later, such as one we're in right now, I'm definitely confident that one application would be good enough. Do you want to talk about why we might not want to do that cosmetic spraying at, later on in the season if if you don't need to spray maybe we want to consider resistance versus how your field just looks oh for sure and i definitely think that as time goes on more and more people are going to be on that level because we're just going to have to live with some weeds one day because we're not going to be able to control them that's just a real reality right like people are eventually going to have to probably be a little bit more accepting of weeds and when you look at the economics behind doing the second app if you're just purely doing it for cosmetic spraying you're basically just wasting your money. It's a little tough to hear and tough to have those conversations sometimes because I get it. I get you want your crop to look pretty, especially the ones on the highway. It's kind of a kind of a thing, right? But you definitely uh, need to pay attention to the economics behind it as well as the resistance. You know, some of these chemicals, especially say you're growing a, a group nine resistant canola, that's a big deal. Roundup is going out up to five times sometimes, I'd say, in a year on some people's farms. And making sure that that active is available is really important. I would say I often have an argument at pre-burn timing about uh, glyphosate. Why would I add an additive into it? Why would I add, you know, another group? Glyphosate works fine on its own. Yes, I know that. I know it's just this great, wonderful product. That's why you don't want to lose it. So you're going to want a tank mix because you're not going to want to lose the opportunity to use such a great product.